Next thing we're going to do is we're going to address this three point linkage. It is a mess. It is a major mess. Well, it's been welded, welded and reinforced several times. I'm just going to do away with it because I do plan to use this tractor and I do want a good, safe three point linkage on it. I went for one of these ones that you can grease and you can have a wee bit of adjustability on them as well. I was going to go with the original one before and try to find an old one, but you know what? I do plan to use this tractor. It's not going to be just for show or anything like that. It's going to be a tractor that I'm going to actually use. So I went for one of these. I think they're a better job. I've seen them on YouTube and I've seen guys who praise them for what they are. So I contacted Conities and I got them to drop me down a set of these. There's no harm when you have these pins out to introduce some grease to them because I guarantee you it's a long time since them parts seen some grease. So now we can adjust both sides. I know I have to put split pins in there yet, but I need to put a washer, I think, that needs to go on there first, and then the split pin in its place. I don't think I actually have them washers. I have to look up. It didn't come in that kit. The kit doesn't come with the actual pins. You have to get them yourself. It comes with the pin, this pin and the knuckle, but you have to buy these pins here yourself. And I won't be putting in any of the old pins because they're very, very badly worn. A lot of them are just old bolts and stuff that people just threw onto her to get her working. Um, so we'll replace everything with what's supposed to be there. The chains here are actually good. And um, there's nothing wrong with them. So we'll be reusing most of that. I might just get new pins um, for this. But otherwise, they're perfect. Um, so, the arms, that's the next thing we need to do. Now, some of you might ask, why don't we reuse the arms that was on it? Just want to show you the arms, how bad they are. There's a hell of a lot of wear there. They have been welded twice, and reinforced. Very badly welded too. Horrifically badly welded. That actually wasn't done that terribly long ago. You see the way it's still fresh. They're just in very poor condition and completely unsafe. So that's why we just said we have to put new arms in this tractor because I could never allow that to be on a tractor. If you were going to do a little bit of ploughing or something on the back of it, having arms like that probably most certainly would break. So we went and got ourselves a new set of arms. So here's our two new arms, ready to rock. Now some of you might ask about these pins, should I change them? No, they're not badly worn. They're okay. Can't take off this cover go down and change these pins but you know something there's next to nowhere on them so they're okay i'm happy enough with the state they're in All right, so our two new arms is on. Now, I'm not going to put any split pins. The split pins is to go down there to hold these nuts from loosening. I'm not doing any of that yet. The same up here. I'm not putting any split pins in any of this stuff until I know that it's all in the right position, and then I will fit all the split pins at the one time. Now, these little pins here that hold the stabilizers in place, I've tried my best to get them off. They will not come off, and I have two new ones here sitting ready to go on. So if something doesn't want to leave on its own will, we'll just have to evict it. Now we're going to be attaching our leveling arms to our lift arms. Okay, I'll figure out what way this goes. I think that sits there. The sleeve goes in here. There we go. That goes in there. So I'm not sure about this. That's hitting off that axle. I have it adjusted. Rape it so the arms is down fairly low, but it's still hitting off the axle. Is that the wrong one for it? 
Hmm. I'll have to figure that out because that just does not seem right. I'll have to order the lads and Connaughty's and see is there a different one for that because that I know it's a bit bulkier than the other one. Um, but it's four. I'm nearly positive I placed the order for at 20. I'll have to just look up the order make sure I didn't place it for another one. But I know it's right. It should be right because these arms would be thicker on a 35 or something like that. So I'll have to have a look and see what happened there. But hey, other than that, I'm going to stick on these chains now. And we nearly have a two-point linkage. <laughs> if not the third one yet, we nearly have the two-point linkage fitted. I need to get new ones of these. can pick them up in a local co-op. Um, but for now, we'll just hook them up because I want to see what it looks like. Dare I say it, but we nearly have a three-point linkage. We have a two-point linkage at the minute. <laughs> uh, that arm, I thought it was wrong, but it is right. Once I had the chains on and everything sort in place, it is right. It's not hitting now at all. It's sitting just exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, and it actually is very similar to the one that was actually on it before. Now I can adjust both ends, which is a good thing to be able to do. So it's another little job ticked off the list. And at least I know it's right. I have to go and I have to get proper split pins for these nuts. And the same in there. And I have to get new pins to go into these linkages here because they're all very badly worn. So I'm not going to bother putting any split pins in any of them. She's not moving from here. They are going to be all done. So I'm just writing down a list as I go along what I have to pick up. I get all them bits and pieces in my local co-op. Um, we have a bad eye leak coming out of the PTO shaft. But I have a new seal kit to go into that. It's only matter taking that off. Pull the PTO out of it and put a new seal kit into that. That's not a big problem. We'll do that. We'll address that a little bit later on. As you can see, a lot of the nuts and bolts here are very badly rusted. Um, that's going to be fun. Trying to get them bolts undone. Um, I don't necessarily have to take them off because the brackets can be sanded on the axle, but I know that these are kind of seized in, so I'm gonna try my best to see can um, I get these freed up. I have sprayed penetration oil all over this tractor and every nut and bolt from the day I got it, um, and I do it every so often. So hopefully it'll make it easier for me when I come along, actually work on them individual parts. All right, so we have the tractor pushed down just in front of my milking parlor, where last night it got a hell of a good cleaning, a real good degreasing, an awful lot of muck taken off. The diesel tank itself has after been taken off as well because it was leaking in a few places if you remember and I wanted to get it off as well just to get a check on some of these linkages and things. You can see there's a lot of wear um, on this decompression lever especially. You can see that amount of play that's there so I'm going to be taking them linkages off and I'm going to try to weld them and rebuild them because I don't think you can actually get any of them linkages anymore. I have searched quite a few places and I can't get any so we're going to try to repair them. You can see also here there's quite a bit of play on this linkage as well that's coming from the throttle if you see this you see that moving back and forth well that shouldn't be like that there shouldn't be play like that on that so it's just simple to wear and a pin there so it might be fit to take that off and again build it up with weld and then file it down into shape and that hopefully will tighten everything up just as best it can because really i would like to get brand new linkages for all these but i don't think they can be got this throttle linkage is completely rotten um so it's gonna have to be rebuilt as well that's all gonna be pretty time consuming and just trying to figure out what bit kind of bits and pieces we're going to use. Um, any use know any good ideas of how we can rebuild that throttle linkage? Please let me know. Would really appreciate that. Um, but for now, we're going to be rebuilding this dash. You can see the dash bracket itself is badly corroded. Well, it's not too bad on that side, but it's corroded on this side. So we're going to be rebuilding a lot of that. You can also see our mud guards is gone. I took the mud guards off last night. I simply just cut off all the bolts and just lifted them off. Sitting here beside me, they're badly corroded. They're really, really badly gone. And definitely was no saving of them. But I am going to reuse some of this. Because um, we have our dash in now on the bench. We are going to be rebuilding our dash, our original dash. And I can use the sheet metal from these fenders um, to patch in all the places was rusted with our new welder. And try to make it as original. We're going to be using the original steel. So that's something at least. So I see the boards took a crap on it last night. Half they took it off. That's all is lovely. Brackets themselves are in fairly good condition. Um, well, they're mounted onto the axle. Yeah, not too bad. There's still plenty of life in them. But eventually, we are going to have to cut them bolts and we are going to have to heat them up and try to get them off. Even this battery bracket is going to be a nightmare to get off because these things are rust welded into place. I have put penetration fluid onto them for the last few days. Whether it'll help or not, I don't know. We're going to have to address that sooner or later. This is the weld you will have seen in two other videos. Uh, it's a brand new welder that I bought uh, back a few months ago. Um, it's a Sealy uh, Mighty MIG 210. Now I've never had a MIG welder before. It's always been a stick welder. Would have loved to have had one years ago. I just never got around to buying one. But the last time we were speaking, I hadn't got a gas bottle. After listening to a lot of you, 
And what you were talking about, I ended up going for one of these hobby, um, hobby weld uh, bottles. I bought it in Castle Blaney in Monaghan. It's just there beside, is a little or Aldi, there's a wee petrol station there. And there's a welding place there. Um, a couple of you mentioned it, I never knew it was actually there at all. I don't even know Castlebany from going up to Lakeland Machinery, but I've never actually been really the town much itself. And great little shop, a little gem just beside the petrol station, and it's packed with tools and stuff, any amount of stuff you could pick up. So if some of you know the name of that shop, just comment down below and put the name up for other people to see. Um, because I can't for life from remember what the name of the shop is. But anyway, this is where I got the bottle. I bought the bottle. All I'll have to do now is go back every so often and get it refilled. Um, but that's the way. I didn't want to rent any bottles or anything like that. So I went down that lane. I said before, I didn't want to rent because I wouldn't be using it often enough probably to go down that lane. I don't know. Maybe that'll change. Maybe I'll find... A lot of people say when you start using one of these, you'll never go back to stick welding. But we'll see. Will that be true for or not? I have to put a plug on it now in a second. I'm going to do that off camera. And then this is our dash. So you can see where it's badly corroded around here. So my theory is the rest of it's okay. We have got a replacement dash that came from Conaty Tractors. When I got properly looking at it, my own's actually in better condition. So there are pieces on that other one that I'm going to be fit to use. Um, like this piece that was on here, it's on the other one. I'm going to be fit to take it off and put it onto this one. And this side is relatively in good condition. Um, the top isn't in too bad as well. Again, hopefully, if I can MIG well right now, I'll be fit to cut this out, make a little template, put in a new piece off the old mud guard, and weld that into place. And that relatively, if you should leave the dash perfect. In theory, let's see how it goes. All right, I should be tightening this up with some plumber's tape. I'm not, but I don't have any actual plumber's tape here at the minute. So this will do for now. Until I get some plumber's tape at the local co-op tomorrow and we'll hook it up correctly the way it's supposed to be done but otherwise this putting on this gauge is relatively straightforward. I'm just out to turn it on anyway and I am reading the instruction book because um, I'm not too sure on this clock here because it says on a lot of places it should be between 20 and 30. Um, liters per minute but then reading this and it says to put between six and eight this see this this clock's different some of them have them in 10 20 30 this is two four six eight so i thought then it was going to be between that every one of these segments stands for like 10 so 20 40 60 80 and so on that have been much too high so oh i don't know i not just make them all the same wouldn't it be an awful lot easier okay so between five and eight the gas on, be help. Up you go, you buy you. Well, between five and eight. Ah, between five and eight. So for now, we we'll just say put it around six and a half. Just to be happy. So six and a half. Not too windy today, anyway. So we we'll see how that goes. I can adjust it as I go along. I learned to use it right as I go along. Well, lo and behold, we're ready to place our very first MIG well. Now, don't be given out to me if I do it wrong. But I went with the instructions and were more or less bang on. I have the wire fed through here, ready to rock. Um, I have read the instructions a few times, no doubt. I have a heap of things wrong. But this is the very first, you can look at that torch, you can see yourself spotlessly clean. It's the very first time I have ever, ever laid a MIG weld. And unlike a lot of you, I decided to put my force weld on video. Yeah, why do I feel like I'm going to regret this? A nice clean strip here, cleaned off just on this old mud guard. We're going to try to put a straight line in this. It's probably going to look like board crap, but what odds? We're going to do a few lines back and forth to start to get something that looks anyway like a weld. That's too much power. So I start off at setting number two, wire speed number five. See there, <laughs> absolutely brutal. Setting number one, wire speed number four, burning through, going too slow. Setting number one, speed number three, getting there a little bit better. Setting number one, wire speed number one. That actually worked really well. 
Um, so now I know this material is really, really light and it's half rotten as it is. And um, I also know that you have to have your material a lot cleaner than you would with a with an arc welder. You could nearly burn through anything with an arc welder when you get used to it. This is different, it needs to be clean. So once I started going to the area that wasn't cleaned off, I could see straight away that it wasn't welding the same. So that's the best way to weld. That is what will fix my dash. Um, so let's get to it. So you can see my cutout is fairly close. So on the back side here, you gotta look. We really are pretty close. So I'm just gonna take the grinder now, and I'm gonna go around, and I'm gonna take off ever so slightly little bits here and there, just till we have it right till it fits in. Look how good that looks. Now we've got a few holes around here. Then I'm going to run the welder across again just to fill up any kind of little holes. And same around any little cut marks on the iron grinder. But all in all, really, really impressed. So I have the new Lucas um, heater plug fitted. Uh, just an Allen key in that. I'm not going to fit it into place just yet, but it's sitting like that there. That's the kind of a close to original one um, I could find. It is from Lucas as well. This in here, also from Lucas, a uh, horn switch. I'm going to be putting a horn on this tractor as well. That would just fit there to see who's sitting there for the time being. Going on the old interweb, and I found a few different clocks that were out there. One of which I came across was this one. There was another one I got that I wasn't that overly happy with, and sent it back. This one here was as close as I could get to something that replicated the original. Now, I have an original clock up there, but it's just so badly corroded. I don't know if I can get it or repaired, I'll put it in in place of this one, but I think for now it's new, it's fresh, and it's kind of made to fit in. Oh, it's starting to look like a dash. I have our amp clock, which looks very, very close to the original. Um, really, really close, so we're gonna fit that in. But instantly, when I have that fitted in, first thing I notice is hole there and a hole there. So what I'm gonna do is to get my welder again, I'm gonna fill them two holes. So we'll come back to our amp clock again. Ah, that's better. No holes now. Lovely. This rubber isn't right though. There it is. Okay, oh, where's that fit? Hmm, oh, where's that fit? So I'm gonna have to have a look at this amp meter clock because there's absolutely nothing on it to hold it in place. No clamps, no nothing. So how does it stay in the hole? That is simply very peculiar. I have a rubber ring here. Just gonna slip over it, it's a tight fit. We come off the other old clock. That's not gonna hold it anyway. I'm gonna have to come up with an idea or make some sort of a bracket um, that will hold it in place because that is not going to stay there without something holding secure. This is our old dash that we got of John Connolly's. It's still a very, very good dash, so it is. Uh, it has a couple of things. It actually has the bracket. It's brilliant, it has this bracket. Mine is completely rusted out. I just realized that. That's awesome. We're gonna be able to reuse that bracket because mine is in bits. So that saves me building a new bracket. So this is the part here we're missing in ours. I'm gonna take it off here and put it on there. I haven't got the pl plunger that goes into it. Maybe someday we can get it. So I'm just gonna run the wire brush in this real quickly and come back to it. It's 
following day, this is our dash completed. This here is what will fit on behind the dash. That's for holding the regulator. I'll be wire brushing that down and putting a coat of paint on it because it is very, very rusty and it does need a wee bit of attention. The dash turned out really well. I know there's a bit of a glare from the light, but I can't go outside at the minute. The noise you're hearing at the moment on the roof is hailstones. The weather's really, really bad. But anyway, we're not complaining too much. That's the dash finished. I'm going to be doing a few more jobs on it, obviously. People might say you're not going to paint it. See, I don't know about this tractor, what we're going to do. We're going to fix everything on, as I said before. This is going to rust, all kind of blend in over time. And then we might be able to sand it down when it rusts and treat it with something. Um, just so that the rust looks worse than it actually is. We don't want the actual thing rusting out anymore. So that might be the kind of lane we go down. We have to just see what happens. Um, just rub a bit of diesel and things on it just to preserve it. Um, and I think we might leave it like that. So that's that dash complete. It's another little job. Ticked off the list. One thing I do want to ask is, and I know people have been really generous out there and have been helping me out as best they can. And I do appreciate that the amount of knowledge that's out there. People offering us stuff that they've left over from projects as well. It's just incredible. It are genuinely really nice people out there. And I'm really lucky to be doing things like this on YouTube to be able to get the chance to meet them. Um, most of the stuff, unfortunately, that gets offered to us, we've already purchased. And we're not looking for anything for free. We'll always look after someone who looks after us. I think when anyone does you a good tour, make sure you return it. Um, but one thing we are looking for is a auxiliary tank for this here. I would like to get one second hand. We have been on eBay, there's one on eBay, and it's just over 80 euro delivered to the house second hand, but it looks in rough shape. I got a close up of some of the pictures and the bottom of it looks to be completely rotted out. And I don't want that either. I want, if you're gonna pay that kind of money for it, I think I can find something much better. So there's bound to be one out there somewhere. If someone knows where it is, um, let me know. I'd really appreciate it. And obviously we'll pay for it, whatever it is, we'll pay the value is worth. She's coming together. We're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. It's not gonna to be too long until we're gonna be starting it up. Um, I cannot wait for that day, but I don't wanna rush it. I probably could start it soon enough as it is, but I don't wanna rush it. I wanna just make sure I've done all the checks and checked over everything before that day does come, but it's coming very, very, very soon. It's getting really, really a lot closer. Another thing we're gonna to have to address is we've got a hole here, a steering wheel housing. There's a little hole there, and that's where that oil's coming from. I thought it was coming from a seal, but it's not. It's coming from that hole. How do you fill that? What is the best way of filling that? Should I use that metal and compound you can get um, and put that down in it? Would that fill it if it was cleaned out and the oil got rid of? Would that work? Let me know. Um, really want to get that fixed. I don't know how you approach that or what type of stuff that is, um, but that's something that has to be fixed because it's only going to get bigger and bigger. In the next video, we're going to be giving it a full service. So diesel filters, oil, back end oil, not just yet. Uh, we're not going to be touching it because we need to put a seal in here. So we're going to be addressing that very soon as well. As always, folks, thanks for watching our channel. Hope you're enjoying this little bit of something different on the side. I certainly am, it's something I've wanted to do since I was a child. My dad wasn't on the day's video. He's about summer, I don't. I wanted him to get him on the end here, but he's a hard man to actually trace down at times. He goes from one house to the other, so I think he's down in my brother's house at the moment, because um, he's off the day, so we'll get him, don't worry. We'll get his full tots, and remember what I said at the end, he'll be the man that'll take this for a spin around the field, and that is what we were pushing towards. I do catch him up here in the shed several times when I'm not looking and he's just walking around it, looking at all the different things on it. He's just memorizing everything that he remembers and the one he did have. I really enjoy seeing him doing that off camera because it's just a nice feeling. You know you've done something good when you see that happen and you know something, that's what it's all about. All the parts you see in today's video were bought in John Connolly Tractors, Kells and County Mead. That's where we've always bought the parts for our tractors. So when, once I went in and seen that they had a good selection of stuff for this particular tractor, it worked out easy. You just get all in one spot, delivered in two days time. You can't be better than that. So I'll put a link up to all the individual items you would have seen today, if that makes it easier for you, if you're doing up a tractor, kind of the same. Anyway, folks, until the next video, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, hit that sub button, give us a like, you can leave a comment down below, help us out if anything you see that we should do or anything we could do differently, don't be afraid to put it in the comment section below. That's what this is all about, having a bit of crack. You can follow us, folks, on Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok. And until the next one, talk to you again.